Dear Megan, today's video is to tell you about Ireland. Since you are currently in North Carolina, the next stop on your trip to grad school is to head to Ireland. So I thought I would give you some things that my Ireland books say are interesting for you to check out so you can start looking them up yourself and um, just start prioritizing which ones you want to go to. All of the things in this video are in the Dublin area. My books cover much more than that, but I didn't want to be like, go across the country of Ireland and see this thing over here. So all of these are in the Dublin area, and here you go. So the first part of the video covers things you should go check out in Dublin that will help you get to know your new home. I'm going to tell you right now that I do not know how to say some of these and probably words that I think I know how to say, I'm saying wrong. Sorry, I'm American, not Irish. Please don't kill me. I will probably have to remind you of this later, but first we're going to start with me butchering the words kill me him goal. I don't know. It is a former prison that documents Ireland's path to independence. It sounds kind of grim, but everything that I've looked at describes it in a positive way, and it does sound interesting. Then you should go hit up the Little Museum of Dublin. This just gives you a history of your new hometown. And then there is O'Donoghue's, which is a pub where apparently Dubliners hang out, so you can get to go meet the local people. And then there is Hoppany Bridge, which is just supposed to be an icon of Dublin. I guess it's like the Suspension Bridge or the Alaco building here in Waco. Next, I thought I would tell you some things about some food. You can go to the Guinness Storehouse and see how they make Guinness beer. And then there are some farmer market-ish things that I thought you would like to know about. There is the Dublin Food Co-op, which is a buzzing community market specializing in organic vegetables, homemade cheeses, organic wines, and there's a bakery. There's also the Coppinger Row Market, which is small, but it has some interesting things, according to this book. And then there's the Harcourt Street Food Market, or the Harcourt Saint Food Market. I have an ST I can kind of make it go either way. And it has organic veggies, cheeses, olives, and meats made into dishes from all over the world is a verbatim description of this thing. And then there's the Temple Bar Farmer's Market, which is a little thing on Saturday morning that's good for going and checking out some goodies. So the first thing on the list of literary things for you to check out in Dublin is Dublin Castle. Mainly this is of importance because it holds the Chester BAT Library and it's pretty. So we're going to move on to the second thing, which is the Chester BAT Library. By the way, I'm not Irish. I don't know how to say these things, so I'm just going to type little captions at the bottom. Don't persecute me. I'm not Irish. The library is an important stop because it holds the Sacred Traditions Gallery, which is basically just texts and manuscripts and small paintings from many religions, and it has some of the earliest copies of the New Testament and other biblical texts. If you want to check out something in the Islamic area, you just want to check out some other religions, there is an Islamic collection, and its main sources are from Iran, Turkey, and India, you know, the main places where Islam was founded. And it has some of the greatest documents of the Islamic art and culture, and it has versions of the Quran from the 9th to 19th centuries, which would probably be pretty cool to check out. It also has the Arts of the Book exhibition, which is just illustrated manuscripts and books from all kinds of different cultures if you want to go look at some pictures. It has the East Asian Exhibition, which is manuscripts of the life of Buddha, and inscribed jade books from the 18th century, and a painted scroll of the Song of Everlasting Regret by Kano Sanisu. It's a Japanese person. I don't really know what any of these are. I know Buddha, obviously, but I'm not entirely sure why the other two are of significance. You should go check them out and tell me. And it also has a Silk Road Cafe, which is good Middle Eastern food. I'm not sure why the book included it, but it says you should check it out. There is also St. Patrick's Cathedral, which has Jonathan Swift's tomb. Kind of cool. You should go look at Jonathan Swift and his dead body. And then there is the James Joyce Center, it has the history of James Joyce, who wrote Ulysses, if you're having problems making connections with that name. 
And if you get tired of looking at dead bodies and manuscripts and texts, then there is the Dublin Writers Museum, which just has little things that are connected with big names, like the telephone of Samuel Beckett. If ever you get tired of walking and you're ready for people to bring the Irish culture to you, you can go to a theater. There's three major ones you can choose from. There is the Abbey Theater. This one does new Irish works and revivals of classical Irish plays. There is the Gaiety Theater, which does modern plays, TV shows, and musical comedies. That is probably where I would be heading. And then there is the Gale Theater, which does international classics and older Irish plays. All of them sound fun, and they all seem like pretty good options for anybody who likes to go to the theater. Some random things that have been pointed out to me of note are the Irish Museum of Modern Art, which is apparently just what it sounds like, but it mainly attracts me because it apparently used to be a hospital for veterans. And then there is Long Hall, which is a pub. The description is you can tipple in Victorian treasure. I don't know what tipple means, but I figure if Victorian treasure is involved, it's at least worth a look-see. If not for the treasure, then to figure out what tipple is.